Good day, YouTube. My name is Dan, and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today, I want to introduce to you guys a coin that I think is definitely worth being aware of in the market at the moment, and that is the coin SKM or Scrumbo. Scrumbo is a blockchain project that completed its ICO less than a month ago. It was so popular that the ICO was completed within one hour. And when the token hit its very first exchange, Gate.io, within five days, the exchange volume on Gate.io was so high that it pushed Gate.io from 15th place in the market exchange to 12th place, and its token price rose by 130% within 24 hours. So I think that this is definitely a project that investors should be aware of currently. Scrumble defines itself as a secure communication-centric blockchain. To learn more about Scrumble and what this means, keep watching this video. Think of the current social media apps that you might use. It might be a text messaging app like WhatsApp or WeChat, or it might be a video chat and conference like Skype. Maybe it's a social media blogging like Facebook, or data sharing like Dropbox, or even a wallet for transferring digital money like Jax. Now imagine a single blockchain project that will do all of the above, not in a centralized manner as many of these platforms do, but in a decentralized manner where all your data is truly not monitored or regulated, your communication will be encrypted and secure, an app that can even bypass any firewall so that every country including China will be able to have the same access and open communication with the rest of the world. That singular project is called Scramble. Currently, the internet communication has three main problems, security, privacy and data ownership, and global access. For security, the internet is a powerful form of communication. We use it every single day and are completely reliant on the internet. WhatsApp alone handles 55 billion, not million, but billion messages every day, 4 billion photos and 1 billion video transfers every single day. We simply can't live without internet communication. Because these companies are all centralized, it means that our information is stored in a single place and is easily hacked. Facebook recently had the data of over 50 million users stolen and misused. WhatsApp was also found to have a backdoor that allowed infiltration into group chats. So whatever we send and they store is simply not secure at all. Besides the above lack of security, our data is also losing its privacy and data ownership. The internet is monopolized by big companies like Google, Facebook, etc. And each of these companies have their own terms of services that we as users need to agree to use their basically essential services these days. And that term of services will then allow them to legally collect and sell our information for free. So for example, what you browse on Google will magically appear on your Facebook feed. This is because there is an exchange of information happening behind your back that you unknowingly permitted when you click agree on the terms and services. Furthermore, our data can also be scanned, stored and even adjusted by the companies who do it under the name of quality control and scanning for inappropriate content. But does it really feel safe to know that they can keep a copy of your sensed data for legal purposes? Finally, marginalized communities have difficulties accessing global access. Consider ourselves blockchain community for example. Google, Twitter and Facebook recently cooperated to ban all cryptocurrency related advertisements. Good and helpful information, example advertisements of proper hardware wallet that will help new investors to avoid being scammed and lose their money is now banned. We can't advertise healthy advertisements and there is nothing that the blockchain community can do about it. Google and Facebook alone control over 70% of all internet advertising. There is no freedom of information or global access. In fact, by controlling the internet advertisements and what they advertise, mass media can actually be manipulated and is being manipulated by promoting or slanting announcements in a certain manner. So centralized information control on the internet is one of the greatest threat to true internet freedom. All right, now that we know the problems, let's take a look at how Scrumble's tech and how they offer, they plan to offer the solution. First of all, Scrumble is of course a decentralized project. So this is pretty standard for any blockchain project, but the fact is that the information is stored not on a centralized server, but on a decentralized server, making it impossible for hackers to hack. 
The actual blockchain structure though is not very well described in the white paper yet. It says that the blockchain protocol will be similar to that of Bitcoin, however the data structure such as the blocks or transactions is significantly different because it contains not only financial data but communication instructions and encryption information as well. Like most blockchains, they will use a hashing algorithm, but this too is not described in detail and all they state is that their scramble blockchain will be able to achieve consensus quickly. So they haven't actually decided on their consensus algorithm yet. Their initial operating speed will is be 500 transactions per second and their design will allow this to scale up to an eventual 1000 transactions per second. Now this figure is actually a little bit underwhelming for me because most new blockchain projects currently are starting at 1000 transactions per second if not higher and most of them aim to scale to much higher numbers. We're talking about a million transactions per second. So with 1,000 transactions per second, if you do the math, if you, count, you multiply 1,000 transactions per second by every second of the day, that works out to a total of about 86 million transactions per day. Now just to put things in perspective for you, just WhatsApp alone, a single chat application, has about 55 billion, not million, billion messages per day. 4 billion photos and 1 billion, billion video transfers per day. And that's excluding the other features that this project aims to target. And this is also excluding China, whom they want to include, and because they are boasting that one of their key features is the ability to bypass any firewall. The main chat program in China is WeChat, and WeChat processes 38 billion messages per day. So all the big chat players are talking about billions of messages per day, and that's only one aspect of what Scramble is trying to target. Okay, 1,000 transactions per second will only offer you 86 million, not even 1 billion transactions per second. Okay, so really I think 1,000 transactions per second doesn't seem enough to meet the requirements of what they want to achieve. In fact, even 1 million transactions per second may not be enough. They did mention in their white paper that they are considering sharding and will also be constantly researching and evaluating new and faster methods of consensus and blockchain load times reduction. So basically, the way I read it is they are saying that their blockchain is not fully developed yet and they have yet to decide on the final consensus algorithm they will use. So this is definitely something to pay attention to if you are thinking of investing in this project. Scramble will also have their own identity-based network security, so this is a good thing. Um, the creation of digital identity is something that is very fast growing in the blockchain space. If you are aware of other projects that are very popular at the moment, projects like Ontology, The Key, etc., those are projects that specialize in ID verification. But even projects like Scramble also use ID verification, creation of digital ID, because it helps with privacy, security, data management, etc. So when you interact with someone, you're not interacting with your full name and your profile, your address, etc. You are interacting with the digital ID that is created for you. The Scramble network will employ a novel solution that is known as the Scramble Network Transport Access Control, okay, or and let's call it SK Tech technology for short. And this technology will allow people to have permission control, which means that um, not every aspect of your profile is shown to everyone. You have per they have to run it through you and you only show them the aspects of your profile that is relevant to them. Um, they will also have unlinkable identity privacy and improved scalability. So I think that it's very good that Scramble is creating their own ID system that caters to the specific needs of each service. What I'm interested to know though is whether or not their ID technology is compatible with other blockchain ID systems. So one of the key features that attracts me to the Scramble project is that Scramble bypasses any firewall. So for the first time in history, close countries like China will be able to access a chat program that is known that the rest of the world uses. This is going to be huge, okay? And the Chinese community for Scramble is already very big because of this, because many Chinese users are looking forward to this as to this feature. However, in China, for example, just one country, the biggest ID blockchain project at the moment is the key. And the key already has a database of hundreds of millions of users. Now, think about this. 
rather than every blockchain project like Scramble and every other project creating their own individual blockchain ID database, okay, which is then becomes very messy. What is happening now is already happening now is that blockchain projects are combining their ID databases to create a more secure ID reputation. Okay, so you have big projects like Neo, Ontology, The Key, and all and they are all working together to pull together their ID data resource because they realize the that there is so much strength in pulling together your resource rather than working and creating an individual database for every project. So if Scramble wants to become a global game changer or even a China game changer, then their project, which is quite ID based, I think it's prudent that at some point they they should or will be confronted with the potential of being part of a larger ecosystem. So, you know, while I'm sure that their SK tech is a very workable technology, what I'm really interested in is to know whether or not it's compatible with other projects ID system. Scramble will also be using an encryption scheme, and this will be used for all aspects of communication, including voice, video, and file transfer. So this is great. Okay, the more layers of security you have, the better. They have developed their own protocol, which is called the Scramble Secure Real-Time Protocol, or SKRTP. And the white paper for this protocol will be published at a later time. So I think you're getting the feel now, but that we are really getting into this project quite early. And a lot of the technology is not yet uh, fully explained or decided in this white paper. One of the key features they did explain of the SKRTP is called key derivation. Simply explaining, not your entire profile will be used for every communication. Right? Different crypto use cases will only require different parts of your profile. So as many as six different keys are needed, but all of these keys will be derived from a single master key in a cryptographically secure way. So this prevents any attacker from being able to collect a large amount of information from a single key that they might have or hack into. But the key management protocol itself, that means the system, will only need to exchange one master key for the SKRTP to derive all the necessary keys and information that it needs. They also mentioned in their tech that the Scramble network will achieve truly decentralized file storage. So this is about storage by utilizing an algorithm that uses unique session identification. Uh, rah, rah, rah. But again, the algorithm details for this safe storage is not reviewed yet. So yeah, I think this is still very early in their tech. And I think that if we come back to this white paper one year from now, it should have a lot more information. The last feature I want to cover or mention to you, which I'm most excited about is the no firewalls feature. The way they explain how they can achieve this is actually very simple. Um, they're explaining that because every conversation in the network is distinctive, encrypted and anonymous, so it becomes impossible to trace the user and block access. The only way you could block access would be to block internet access. So once a person has access to the internet, you can't actually trace that they're using the Scramble network, so you can't actually stop them. So this is really a feature that I'm most excited about. Their explanation kind of makes sense, but it also kind of doesn't make sense. It's maybe too simple. So I'm just thinking aloud here as a very lay person. The country may not be able to stop the Scramble technology, but surely they can ban the Scramble app. So they can't stop the technology, but surely they can stop the app, right? So if they tell Google stores and iTunes stores to just stop the app, just ban the app, um, surely they can do that. And can you still use the chat program without the app? Because as a lay person, I don't know how to bypass them. I, I don't know how to use your technology to chat with people in America if I don't have your app. I, I'm totally dependent on the interface, the app. So I don't know, maybe I'm missing something here because again, I can see how the firewalls can't stop the technology, but I don't see how the apps can stop the government or how the governments can not stop the app, if that makes sense. Like I said, I'm probably missing something here, but nonetheless, you know, I'm going to pay attention to this feature because for me, this is really the key feature of the project. And if they can really deliver it, it will be game changing. And just this pro this aspect alone will potentially make the whole project huge. They will be launching their Android and iOS app soon. Okay. But uh, I, I just want to mention here. I don't think this is considered an MVP or minimum viable product from a blockchain project point of view. So in blockchain projects, uh, as the project develops, at some point they launch what is known as MVP, 
a minimum viable product and that usually gives us the confidence that they this team this project will be able to deliver a working blockchain product i don't think that their app that they're releasing right now is an mvp okay i think a lot of people are very excited about it but they have actually said in an interview recently that the app is actually a centralized product okay meaning it's just like the thousands of chat programs out there like whatsapp they haven't decentralized it yet it is not a blockchain product and they are still working on the actual blockchain architecture and the core features like the consensus algorithm they don't have a blockchain yet it's not that hard to develop a centralized chat program like whatsapp there's thousands of them on itunes okay but i would definitely be wanting to look out for an actual decentralized product like their beta before i will call it the actual blockchain product okay so i mean the feature sounds great um but this is not a blockchain mvp from my point of view okay so i think this is a project with great potential i just want people who are getting involved at this point in time this early stage to go in with a realistic awareness of where the project's tech development is really at scramble network um is the child of scramble technology scramble technology is the parent company of this project scramble technologies has actually been around since 2014 and they have filed over 30 global patents and have been used by over 400,000 users they've also launched a unified communication platform in 2017 with a strong market response not sure what that means but it was a strong market response they have also more than doubled their staff last year and currently have over 40 team members. This is the team for the Scramble Network. It's a big team and a well-balanced team in terms of their roles. As always, I'll go through a couple of the profiles and then I'll let you go through the rest by yourself. So Christine Kuo is one of their co-founders. Her working resume isn't that long actually. She started working in 2009 according to LinkedIn, so that's less than 10 years working experience. Her first four jobs were two teaching assistants and two investment analysts, all less than a year long. Her next job was an investment and corporate development associate at Yumiwi Technology, which is a significant company in China, where she worked there for almost three years. And she must have done really well there because her next job was then to be vice president of Kentech Capital, a VC fund, which she worked for two years until October of 2017 before she moved over to Scramble to serve as the vice president of the corporate development department and the co-founder of this project. <coughs> Another one of their co-founders is Eric Lifson. And according to LinkedIn, he started work also in 2009 and he started work as an account executive for eight months before moving to Cosset where he was for over four years. Whilst at Cosset, he worked as an account executive as well and he was part of the team that was responsible for managing a few of McDonald's advertisements and more. He then took a break from work to pursue his MBA between 2013 and 2014. And after graduating with an MBA in 2014, he started work at Scramble as one of the co-founders, as well as the vice president of marketing and strategy. And you can go through the rest of the team's individual profiles. Uh, I went through most of them briefly just to get a rough view of the team. And generally speaking, most of them have about eight to 10 years of working experience. So not super long and a handful of them have less than five years working experience. So that's quite little. Um, they've all been in the communication industry for quite a while, but for all of them, I think this is their first blockchain experience. So this just emphasizes to me again, that for this team, getting a communication app out, which is what they are doing now with the mobile apps, okay, isn't hard for them because they, it's something they're familiar with. But integrating that with blockchain technology and getting a blockchain project out is gonna be challenging for them. So that's what, what I would really want to look forward to. Um, Many people think that it's easy to create a blockchain. It's really not that easy, guys. Okay, when you think about last year in 2017, 70 to 80 percent of all ICO projects have now failed to deliver the concept in their white paper. That means when you read the white paper, it's very attractive. It sounds like a great idea, but 70 to 80 percent of all of those projects have failed, which means if you invested your money in those, you've lost basically all your money. So that's pretty scary, guys. Uh, when you understand the rate of failure in the blockchain space, then you begin to appreciate and understand why so many investors choose to invest in projects with an MVP, with a minimal viable product, 
because having an MVP really lowers the risk tremendously in an already very high risk crypto market. So this is not far guys, this is just caution. And I mean, I think this project has a promising concept. So now we come to their strategic advisory board as well as their early investors. And for me, this is where it really picks up in terms of their resume. Their advisory team includes people like Antonio Diario, who is who was a co-founder of Ethereum, and he's currently the CEO of Jax and Decentral. They also have Jainus too, who is the CTO of Ion as well as well. So I mean, these guys are big names. These guys are guys who have proven again and again that they know how to get a working blockchain product out. So having them on the advisory board is very reassuring to me. They also have other advisors who are all quite senior and all have quite a many years of experience in their various fields. Their early investors include people like Matthew Spoke, who is the founder and CEO of the Ion Network. So I have a lot of respect for Ion as a project. So it's really great to see that both the CEO and CTO are involved in this project. And they also have close to 10 capital venture firms invested in this project. And I think in the recent interview, they said that they now have 15 capital firms that are invested in this project. That says a lot to me. I mean, capital firms are professional investors. So if you get a professional investors who are much wiser than you or me, and they choose to invest in one project, that's a good sign. If you have 15 capital firms who are investing in one project, that tells you that there's something worth paying attention to in that project. So that I think, you know, 15 capital firm investors is a very reassuring um, fact for a token investor like us. So even though the team's resume itself was a bit underwhelming for me, the advisory and early investors resume is very impressive to me. This is their roadmap. Uh, it's really quite sparse. They only had nine milestones set between 2014 to 2019, six years. So we are currently in the second quarter of 2018. And the next milestone in the third quarter is the one that I've been mentioning to look out for, which is the launch of the beta decentralized app product. Okay, that's not the mobile app they got now. This is actually going, the quarter three is when we will see their real beta blockchain MVP released. The full Scramble network ecosystem will only be launched in the second quarter of 2019. So that's a full year away, but that's all right. For a good project, that length of time is worth the wait. The token use is expected to be used across all the different features of the project. And this project has a lot of features. So that sounds like a lot of potential use case. The actual manner of how the tokens will be used again is not clear. So we will have to wait for more information. Uh, you know, like uh, how much is the actual cost of doing a multi-user um, video conference, etc. Now, one aspect of the white paper that caught my eye, which kind of confused me a little bit, is the mention that the tokens will be used as membership rights. So basically, the tokens will be used like a license. This means that the number of tokens you hold will determine the membership class that you have. So for example, if I wanted to send you a big data file, I can't just have a normal membership. I need to have a premium membership. But then not just me, both of us will need to have enough tokens to be premium members for me to send a big data file to you. Now, in this case, what is not clear is after having that premium membership and holding that amount of tokens, do I still need to pay tokens for the actual transfer? Because the impression I get is that you don't need to. You just need to hold enough tokens to be a premium member. Now, if I'm a user of this app, that's great. Okay, especially if I buy very early on like now and get the tokens cheap. So then I get cheap premium membership for free okay, for life, right? But as a token investor, the fact that the tokens will not be used is a nightmare. Because if everyone just buys the tokens once to hold it forever, the tokens get locked in, the tokens is not liquidated, which means the token is not reflected in the actual exchange market, which I think they only measure the tokens that have been um, used in transactions for the last two years. And no liquidation means no circulation, which means no demand, and no token demand means poor token value. So it becomes a nightmare for the token investors. So, and you know, if you say that, oh no, no, there is token use, and we're gonna charge people for doing video calls, then, when people just go back to WhatsApp or Skype because that's free. So, you know, I think that token economics is something that uh, every investor should pay attention to. There is no point guessing now. Uh, we should just wait for the team to actually announce the token use and the actual cost in terms of how much each feature actually costs. And then from there, we can do the maths to work out whether or not this is a profitable um, investment for token investors. 
But definitely one aspect to pay attention to because token economics for me is one aspect that could literally break or make whether any project is a worthwhile investment for token investors. Finally, taking a look at pricing. So this is their current price. At the moment now, a token is worth seven cents. As mentioned before, they have only been on the exchanges less than a month. And when they first hit the market, they were doing such huge volumes on Gate.io that they bumped it up from 15 position to 12 position. So that, that's impressive. Since then, both the token price and volume has cooled down significantly. In the last 24 hours, their volume was only about 5 million. So that's not big at all. The spike in mid-May was really due to another coin exchange listing and currently they are only on three exchanges, Get.io, IDEX and DDEX. So these are very small exchanges. So certainly, you know, once they get listed on the medium uh, coin exchange like KuCoin or a big coin exchange like Binance, then, you know, we expect a lot more room to grow for this coin. Okay. And also the dip that they had in the last two to three weeks, if you look at the charts, is really not their fault. It's just because of market trend and it's not them specifically. Okay. Overall, I think that the Scrumbo network is a project with a very great concept. Okay. I think it's a very, very ambitious project. Even if they aim to be just a blockchain chat app that could bypass firewalls, like just a WhatsApp app that could bypass firewalls, I think that itself would have been huge. I mean, just taking on WhatsApp and WeChat alone would be a massive project. But they are taking on more than just that. They're taking on basically the entire internet communication world. They're taking on WhatsApp, WeChat, Facebook, Skype, Jax, and more, all in one go. So the scope of this project is really massive. And I think that's why so many investors are so excited about the game-changing potential because they understand the scope and they're jumping in very early. Uh, I love the concept and the philosophy of personal data protection. So when their product does come out, I will definitely be trying out their product. But apart from that, right, as a token investor, this project is still very much in its infant stage. And um, the concept is really just in the white paper. Core aspects of their blockchain technology, like the consensus algorithm, appear to still not even be decided. The fastest transaction speed that they both they will achieve, which is 1,000 transactions per second, doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't even seem to me like that can support even a fraction of the services that they want to pro provide. And there's still a lot of unknown in terms of the actual blockchain technology as well as the actual token use as well as the actual token pricing, how much they're going to charge. So overall, I think as an investment right now, Scrumble is probably a higher risk than some of the other group projects that we've reviewed recently. But with the scope that it's trying to achieve, I mean, this is a project that could potentially give crazy returns as well. So high risk for very high gains. Let me know what you guys think of Scramble. You know, I'm interested to know how many people out there are already aware of this project. And if you are, what your thoughts on the project is. Okay, Your comments do help and go a long way in helping the rest of the people who read the comments to decide whether or not this is a project worth investing in. So those are my thoughts on Scramble, guys. I hope you, you guys found this video helpful, especially those of you who requested it. Thank you for introducing me to this project. I think that Scramble is definitely a project worth keeping an eye on and introducing to the rest of the community. Always remember that none of this is professional advice. It's just me sharing my thoughts and personal opinions with you. So please always do your homework and do your own research. Do give us that like to support us. And if you're not already following us, definitely hit the subscribe. We have many interesting coins in the lineup for the next couple of weeks. I did take the weekend off because I had a friend visiting from interstate, but there's now definitely quite a few good coins that I think I want to introduce to you guys over the next couple of weeks. So definitely follow us for that. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, guys. Have a fantastic day wherever you are, and I'll catch up with you guys again very soon.